the scripture says, if you Ecclesiastes chapter 3, it talks about there's a time for everything and there's a season for everything. And for a season, the, the oppressor has a season. Amen. Amen. And the oppressed has a season. And then sometimes things shift, and now the oppressed is free, and the oppressor is now in bondage. Because everything has a season. And people don't want to believe that. That's why we can't put a whole lot of confidence in different societies and governments and so forth and so on. In the book of Daniel, God described through Daniel, through a dream that Nebuchadnezzar had, he described that Babylon was one day going to see its end. Oh then the Medes and Persians going to take over. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Then they're going to see their end. Then the Greeks going to take over. Oh then they're going to see their end. Mm -hmm. Then the Romans going to take over. Mm -hmm. This is in the book of Daniel. Oh mm -hmm. And then the Roman rule will end. Mm -hmm. And then Jesus will take over. Each empire had a season, Amen. but the last empire, which was Jesus, he had an everlasting season. Hallelujah. There's no end to his. All right. Everyone else ended. Amen. Amen. Oh my. So we don't need to be hung up because uh, there's uh, a perception that because you've been in a specific state, and even if we look at our society today, I talked last week about how our ancestors, uh, they experienced things we didn't experience. They ex yeah. You know, our great, great, great grandfathers and grandmothers, yeah. many of them experienced slavery. Yeah. Many of us today don't experience slavery. Now, we call it slavery. Some of us, and some of us that are, can I say this? Some of us, some of us that are uh, simple-minded, we think that we got it bad, as bad as they had it then. We don't understand how far God has brought us. We don't, we don't, even, we don't even have a, a time to appreciate and be thankful to God for how far he's brought us. Some of us are so busy complaining about what we don't have and how we haven't been able to do and how we lack this and lack that. And we don't understand that our forefathers, our ancestors, suffered tremendously to get us to this point. And every now and then, we should just tell God, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for helping us to be where we are today. Amen. Amen. Some of us wouldn't have made it if we was born in those generations. Amen. Come on. I can tell, by, I can tell how the way they sound off today, oh that they were making in those generations. Right. Mm -hmm. oh my God. And is it, is, it, is it perfect? No. Well, why is it not perfect? Because it's imperfect people that is moving this thing on. Amen. The only thing that's perfect is Jesus. Amen. And if we get the perfect one in us, I mean, our flesh will still be imperfect. But the spirit that he placed in us will be perfect. Amen. And if we want to follow him through that perfect spirit, spirit, then our life will change, and then we'll look at things differently. Mm -hmm. Instead of having a heart of murmuring and complaining, we'll have a heart of thank thanksgiving and a heart of gratitude. Amen. Amen. I've never seen so many people have so much that complain. Amen. And, and it makes you wonder, because I came from a family with a lot of kids, 10 lamb kids, and the money and the things that God has blessed me with today, it ten times more than what my parents had to raise all those kids. Amen. Thank you. Oh However, people of today complain about they don't have enough. And well, you don't account for inflation. No, what what I don't count for is it's not that I don't count about count for or or understand inflation. What I don't account for is a lack of gratitude. Because if I'm thankful, I'll understand and appreciate what I have. I won't, I won't see lack. I'll see fullness. Amen. 
So this is important because we're going to talk about leaving slavery. Leaving slavery. Amen. And when we truly leave slavery, let me say this. When we truly leave slavery, we leave the mindset of slavery. Because our body can be set free, but our mind still be enslaved. Amen. When we truly leave slavery, we talk about our mind being set free. Jesus said it like this in John chapter 8. He said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Amen. Too many people reject truth and wonder why they are still in bondage. They reject truth. We, 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 we talk week after week, and when we produce these videos, we talk week after week about repenting of our sins. Being broken, being contrite before God. Amen. Confessing our sins, our faults, our shortcomings before God. And ask him to remove them from us. And then turning our life away from those sinful ways and turn our life back toward God, a, go, a holy God. Amen. We talk about this week after week almost. And it's truth. We talk about as we repent, then we talk about the next stage of us getting our life right with God is being baptized in the water in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. There is no other name under heaven given among men Hallelujah. whereby we must be saved. We must apply the name. The name is the blood, and the blood is the name. We must apply that name and that blood to us through water baptism as we bury the old man. Because baptism, baptism will mean that what we're doing is we're burying the old man or, or submerging that old man in water, and that is symbolic of a burial of the old nature. Amen. Then, we must, then we must, after that, we must allow God to resurrect us or make, a, make alive that in us which was dead, which is the spirit of us. And he quickens our spirit by the Holy Ghost, so the Holy Spirit coming in our lives, and what was once dead, now God made alive, which is now the resurrection of our spirit, and our soul now is quickened towards that spirit. And so we talk about this week after week after week, because what we want to do is we want to try to free us from slavery. What kind of slavery, Pastor? I'm glad you asked. We want to free us from the slavery of sin, which is the most powerful slave, can I say this? It's the most powerful slave master in the world. Amen. Sin. Amen. There is no more powerful slave master than sin. Because when we live this whole life and after it's gone, we still got to answer to God for sin. And God has provided the remedy and he's provided the means for us to de be delivered and set free from sin. Amen. 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 Now, my body may not get healed, but my sin can be erased. Amen. 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 Leaving slavery. If we have the truth, we can leave slavery. Amen. Amen. Now, this lesson is going to deal with actual a physical deliverance from slavery. And we'll see that even though they were physically delivered from slavery, they still had a mental bondage of slavery upon them. And God had to work with them on that. And that, and that happens so many, many times, especially in the community that I come from, you know, black community. Many times we operate through a slave mentality because there are times we look to be victimized or we accept victimization and we say, well, it's so and so fault. And we, we don't want to take stock and look in the mirror and see what part that we play. Now, some, some, let me get wrong, sometimes when Egypt when they were cruel to the Israelites, let me make this straight. When they were cruel to the Israelites, a lot of it was unwarranted. And sometimes when we are oppressed by others that may not look for us, 
A lot of times it's unwarranted. But sometimes we want to play the victim to try to incur some type of empathy or sympathy to try to put us in a light that we shouldn't be in that light. And that, to me, is a slave mindset or a slave mentality. And it's also a spirit of victimization. Why would I read a Bible to tell me I could be more than conquerors and walk around with a spirit of victimization? Those two, those two clash. Either I'm, either I'm more than a conqueror or I'm a victim. What, which is it? Amen. Amen. All right. I'm more than a conqueror through him that has loved us, through Jesus Christ. And so, okay, I might be mistreated. I might be taken advantage of. I might be discriminated against. I'm nobody victim. Because the Bible tells me, and I believe it, that I'm more than a conqueror. All I see that as is, okay, you discriminated me against me. That's fine. All God did is say, I'm going to close that door because I don't want you to go through that door. I want you to go through a different door. Amen. It's not, listen, it's not, it's not a lack of opportunity or, lack, or discrimination. It's a detour from where God wants you. you want, we want to go one way. And God said, no, I want you to go a different way. And so they don't let you have that. And you think, oh, God, fine. Learn to be thankful. Be thankful for the closed doors. Be thankful for being told no sometimes. Be thankful for the fact that not everybody receive you. God don't want them in your life anyway. Help me, Holy Ghost. Learn to understand how God works. Amen. So we don't walk around here with this chip on our shoulder like, oh, everybody, you know, why is everybody always picking on me? Come on. My Bible tells me I'm more than a conqueror through him. See, the Bible tells us who we are. Amen. What do you, we have to believe what the Bible says about us. Mm-hmm. Psalm 119 verse 14 says, he said, oh, sorry, Psalm 139 verse 14 says, For we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous is thy works. we, st- we got to start believing what the Bible says about us. But we really can't believe it if we don't have the spirit of God in us to tell us this is what God thinks of you. Amen. See, when you know what God thinks of you, you don't really put a whole lot of uh, attention or you don't really give a whole lot of attention to what other people think of you. Because you know what God thinks of you. Amen. It's important. That's leaving slavery. Amen. It's physical. It's mental. It's emotional. And it's spiritual. You got to leave all of it behind. Amen. Got to leave all of it. I should not be boohooing over something that happened to me 15 years ago and I got the Holy Ghost. Amen. I got the Holy Ghost. Why am I bemoaning something that happened to me 15 years ago? Amen. Has not God healed me of that? Has I not been delivered of that? Or on this end, has I not forgiven the person that did that to me? See, I'm in bondage. Why? Not because God don't want to free me, but because I choose to keep bringing stuff up that God say, let go. Leaving slavery. And then they wonder, because, let me tell you something. When we hold on to that stuff, it spills over to other areas. It spills over. It just don't remain that one isolated event. And so when we interact with somebody else, we bring that issue into this new relationship. I'm talking true. Got to learn to let go. Got to learn to forgive. Got to learn that everybody is not going to do things perfectly. 
Got to learn that we are people that are still on a journey trying to get where God wants us to go. Amen. Be thankful and move on. And, oh, that's easy for you to say. Yeah, it is for me to say. It ain't easy for me to do. Amen. We struggle. Listen, I'm going to pass. I struggle like everybody else sometimes, especially when you cut and hurt deeply. But I know, I know at the end of the day, it does me no good to continually hold and harp on it. I have to move on from it. If I'm going to serve God to the fullness, man, God know how to handle those situations. And we're going to get into this lesson because God going to show Moses and the Israelites how he handled the oppressors. <laughs> He going he to shake some stuff up today. He gonna show, this is how I handle your enemies. This is how I handle those who come up against you. This is how I handle those who oppress you or who try to mistreat you. God's going to show us today. This is how I handle them. I have on the slide up there on the screen uh, the Underground Railroad. Amen. The, the Underground Railroad, it, it became a method of getting slaves to, to freedom. They were in slave states, and it became a method of getting slaves from slave states to states of freedom where you can look like me, look, be darker, and yet walk around and be treated like a man or a woman with some respect. It it, it 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 was that's what it was. It, it was a method to get them from states that treated men and women like property to states that treated men and women like men and women. And it was a method. It was a method of doing that. And it was a shame that our nation had to have that type of method for that the nation could see that you need to treat people as people, or humans as humans. Just because they look differently don't mean that they're less than. And, and uh, God allowed, uh, you know, we're talking about Harriet Tubman and many others to uh, delve out a means of helping people move to freedom where they could have the same uh, respect as a human being that others had, even though they didn't look like those that were where they were going to. And God is still today moving people from one stage to another stage of humanity so that there could be true and actual freedom where if you don't look like me and I don't look like you, you can treat me as a man, I can treat you as a man or a woman or whatever with some, with some dignity and respect. Because the only way we're going to move forward is to learn how to have respect and dignity for one another. Amen. And God allowed this method to come into play because God saw that what this nation did was foul, filthy, and wrong. Mm -hmm. I call it out. It was foul, filthy, and wrong Amen. to treat human beings mm -hmm. like they're less than human beings. Amen. 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 That is foul. Amen. And we say, well, you know, you know, you, you commit crime and all this today. That's why. No. Mm -hmm. It doesn't give anyone the right to mistreat anybody based on how they look. Amen. Amen. Have we not ever heard the saying, we can't judge a book by its what? Cover. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. And all we're looking at a lot of time is the cover of the person. You don't know what's inside that person. Amen. Amen. It might be that person is a murderer or a killer or whatever. Fine. And they may be that a murderer or a killer. And they might have the same hue and skin tone as I have. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. But I'm not that person. That person not me. Amen. I'm trying to talk about God's love. All right. That person's talking about murdering and killing. We're not the same people. Amen. Amen. 
And so that affords people to try to enslave people and oppress people because they are different. And God has said, no, you all come from Adam. You ain't, what, what, you, what, God said, how are you different? You all come from Adam. Amen. Based on where you migrated, that could affect how you look outwardly. Amen. But let me share this with you. You have the blood types, A positive, uh, A negative, B positive, B negative, O, A, B negative. You have these blood types, and a person that looked like me can be the same blood type as a person that looked completely different from me. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm. Because God will confound those who think they're wise. Mm-hmm. And he's saying, no, this is how I set it up because I want us, he want us to turn from sin, turn to the Savior, and be saved. It, ultimately, he wants all of us to be saved. And so, but we talked about, we, we talked about the Underground Railroad, and we got there the free states, the slave states, you know, uh, the roots of the Underground Railroad, most of them come from the South, and, and they were trying to uh, free people that shouldn't have been enslaved in the first place. Man. It, If we're honest in our nation, in our society, a better part of this nation was built on free slave labor. Amen. Free slave labor. It's one thing when you have, you can, you can have a company, and if you don't have to pay nobody, you can make a lot of money. Mm-hmm. All the money come to you, and you ain't got to pay nobody. Now, where in the world is that just? I ain't talking about fair. I'm talking about just. All right. I'm talking about just is God's word. Fair is our word. Amen. Amen. I, I, I left the word fair a long time ago. That ain't fair. No. Is it just? If you weighed it on the scales of humanity when it comes to equitableness, is it just? Amen. Where is that just? Where you got people building everything around you, building your company, your corporation, and you don't pay them a dime. Jesus told a parable about the man that went out to hire people. Amen. He said he went at the third hour of the day and he hired some people and he said, whatever's right, I'll pay you. Well, so he went at the first hour, he said, whatever right I paid. Then he went the third hour, the sixth hour, the ninth hour, and then the eleventh hour. And what Jesus was saying was, listen, I'm going to continually hire people to bring in my harvest. And I'm willing to pay them for the labor that they perform. Amen. 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 Now, somehow, some way, when this society got started, we got it backwards. When they decided that they was going to tell the king, we're going to throw your tea in the Boston Harbor. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Amen. When they decided to tell the king, no representation without, no, no taxation without representation, somehow they got it backwards when it came to the people that didn't look like them. And they said, okay. We're going to work y'all until you die. And we're going to take your children and sell you into, into slavery until they die. And we ain't going to give y'all nothing. Where is that just? It's not just. Amen. I ain't doing no civil rights lesson. I'm in the Bible. Because we're going to talk about how the Egyptians did the Israelites. And it was a similar fashion. Amen. Amen. They used to provide straw so the Israelites could make bricks to build it up Egypt. Amen. They were making bricks to build the foundations and the, and the structures in Egypt. Amen. And then they say, we ain't going to give you straw. Get your own straw. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Amen. And then pay them a dime. Oh. 
All them pyramids and the sphinx and stuff they see over in Egypt. Built on slave labor. I know we go visit. Oh, I'm going to travel. I want to go to Egypt. I just want to see the sphinx. I want to see the, the pyramid. Slave labor. A lot of these port cities, Charleston, Savannah, a lot of these port, New Orleans, a lot of these port cities, uh, uh, St. Augustine, Florida, a lot of these port cities built on slave labor. It's not just. It's not just. And so God, he put in the heart and the mind of those to say, we're going to get these folks to a place where they're free. Where if they work, maybe they can get a wage. And it's important because we will condemn other countries that don't treat their humans right. And we call it human rights abuses. Amen. And we will try to hold up this banner of purity. <laughs> Man. As if though we've always done it right. And can I, can I quote Jesus? I think it's the eighth chapter, John, when he wrote in the dirt because they brought the woman that was caught in adultery. Come and quote Jesus for our society. You without sin, you cast the first stone. Amen. All right. See, see let, let's look at this history before we talk, talk about what we're going to do over there and how they're doing wrong over there. Amen. And, and people say, oh, you, you know, that's so, socialism, communism. Call it what you want to call it. We know what the Bible call it? Hypocrisy. Maybe there are some things as a nation we shouldn't speak on. <laughs> I'm just saying. Maybe some, just maybe, something we need to kind of be a little quiet about. <laughs> you without sin, <laughs> cast the first stone. A little saying that the world says, they put it this way. They that live in glass houses. Come on now. And so we're talking, we're still on the lesson, leaving slavery. I'm just laying the foundation for this lesson so we can understand how far God has brought us. It's important because I believe God is using our society uh, and the freedom of our society to spread the gospel and the word of God throughout the world. And we read, we read our, our scripture for this year, Psalm 24. We read, uh, you know, uh, about God's sovereignty. And it says, who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? And who shall stand in his holy place? He that have clean hands and a pure heart. And is that not in the book? Amen. I believe it's Psalm 24, verse 3 or 4. It says, who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who, is, or who shall stand in his holy place? He that have clean hands and a pure heart, who have not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn what? Deceitfully. Wow. Amen. Then he goes and say, he shall receive the blessings from the Lord mm -hmm. and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Come on now. <laughs> it's all through the word Amen. about how we need to treat and interact with one another mm. and how we need to show love to each other Amen. and how we need to represent God uh, on behalf of our fellow man to try to win them to God we're we trying to win people to God Amen. I'm not trying to drive anybody away we're trying to win people to God but we got to do it uh, of course justly and with spirit of integrity. In fact, in Micah chapter 6, verse 8, it says, what did the Lord require of man? Amen. He said, to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. 
That's what God's requiring. Do justly. Be, be just with one another. Amen. Amen. If you want to see a society go downhill, try to keep people in slavery that God is saying, I want them free to come and worship me. Amen. It's hard to see God in slavery. And as we grow to make life choices, um, if we grow directionless, then we can find ourselves in bondage of other things and other areas that, as a young person, we could never see ourselves being a part of. And it's going to take the power of God to free us. You will hear me say sometime that God will allow us to become sick and tired of being sick and tired. There are times when we feel we hit rock bottom and we, there's no way to go but up. And we start looking for help out of whatever dilemma we're in because we know that there's something better than what we're in. And the guy told him about Jesus. He took him to church. And he said he went down to the altar. And I, I'll share this with you. When you really want to change and when a person really want to be delivered, you don't have to pry and beg them to come to the altar. You don't, when, a, when a person really know that they need to change something in their life, they need to change for the better, they need God to help them. You know, because we make altar calls and we do altar calls over again. You know, why don't you come to the Lord and give your life to him? We sing the songs, come to Jesus, come to Jesus, come to Jesus right now. You know, you know or I surrender all. We sing these songs trying to implore people to get up from their seat to come to the Lord. Those people are not ready. Let's just admit it. The word could go out and could share, share, hey, you know that your life is not where it should be. You know you're living beneath your privileges. You know God got better for you. And they'll sit there like a hard rock glued to a seat. Amen. But when a person has hit rock bottom, and when a person, like the prodigal son, when they came to themselves, Nobody told him, nobody made a plea, you need to go back home. He made the decision. The best people that come to get saved and get filled with the Holy Ghost are people that realize that I am at rock bottom and I need to make a decision. Very few people come when things are going well. Now, I thank God that he saved me. I came when I think my life was doing well, thank the Lord. But very few come. And so what happened was this guy, Randy, he had his addictions. He would, he would uh, push the grocery carts today to kind of get them lined up. And at night, he will live behind the grocery store and do drugs. And he realized that that is a dead-end street. It's not going to give him the, the desired results that he wants. So what did he do? He went to church. What does the song say? Something got a hold of me. I went to church one night and my heart wasn't right. <laughs> Something got a... People that make a change, they don't need a, listen, once they hear the word, they don't need a lot of folks to implore them to come down and give their life to the Lord. They're ready. Amen. 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 If I got to implore you for 20 minutes after you heard God's word, you ain't ready. Let's, and we talk about doing altar calls. All the, listen, altar calls, are you ready to give your life to Jesus? Do you want to give your life to Jesus? That's the altar call. When Jesus called his disciples, he said, come follow me. That was it. That was the altar call. Amen. When, when, when he saw Nathaniel, Nathaniel had asked a question, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Jesus said, listen, a Jew with no, a Jew with no God. Can you come follow me? And he come follow him. They left their boats, their fishing nets. They left the tax, Matthew left the tax collecting and they follow him. That was the altar call. And people said, well, you had to entreat, entreat and implore for 15, 20 minutes after they sat there for an hour and heard the word of God. They're not ready. If a person is not desperate, they're going to take their time. 
They, they don't feel the pressure or the press. The people that really come to God, they feel the pressure or the press that they say we need God. Amen. Jesus said like this. He, straight, he said, straight is the gate and narrow is the way. And few be there that find it. Few be there that get desperate enough to press through. Because when we come to God, we got to press through all our pressures that's going on. All the things that our bills that we got, our relationships that may be going sour, all these things that people did for us and mistreating us. We got to press through all that and come. We got to come with a mind and a heart to say, Lord, fix me. I'm, I'm broken. Fix me. Help me, Lord. I can't do this no more by myself. I need your help. I need deliverance. I need strength. I need your spirit. I need your love. I need your joy. I need your peace. I need your mercy. We, when you're desperate, you come and you come with all that you have to give to, give to that person that's going to help you out of that dilemma. He said, God, fill me with the Holy Ghost. Where in this story? And instantly freed me from all my addictions. And I'm going to tell you something. Who the Son set free is free indeed. Amen. When God free us, I don't have to leave the church if I smoked. And God freed me from sin. And he gave me the Holy Ghost. I ain't going out and light up next. I ain't going outside the church doing light up no more. Amen. And, well, I'm still overcoming. No, there are some things God instantly takes from you. The thing that had you in the clutches of what you were, God will remove those things and set you free. Now, as you begin to live, there are other things may come down your path that you have to overcome. Look what he said here. He said, I never smoked, drank, or did drugs again. That's deliverance. Jesus would deliver people and he would say, go and sin no more. Amen. I never had a desire to do it either. Not only did God set me free, he shielded me from any withdrawals. And people that are addicts understand the power of withdrawals. But when the Holy Ghost come in and free you, you'll be free from even wanting to participate, the withdrawal of it. Well, I know your body is accustomed to whether it's chemical and all that. God will free you from that chemical addiction also. He is able to do it. I've had too many people share with me their testimony of that. The world calls it recovering. God calls it deliverance. Let's understand something. I'm recovering. I call. No, be delivered. The church, we should not put the tags on the thing that the world put. I know it don't sound uh, ethically right. I know it's a, well, you know, people have this. Listen, do we have enough faith to believe that God can do it or don't we? Amen. When a person come into church and say, I'm recovering this, I'm recovering, I'm thinking, yes, okay, you might be recovering because that what they put, I was a tag they put on you. But God sent you here to be delivered. 